Donc, euh, merci à tous d'être venus. Et puis, je vais donner la parole à Eduardo, qui euh, vient de chez QRT, qui est chercheur quantitatif et même Kaggle Compétition Master sur, euh, bah, sur Kaggle, du coup, et qui va présenter le premier challenge en anglais. En anglais. Merci, Marie. Bonjour à tous. Hello everyone. My name is Eduardo Peinetti. I'm a quantitative researcher at Cuban Research and Technologies. I'm also a Kaggle Masters. I, I really enjoy this type of challenges and I hope that you enjoy ours. Let me introduce first QRT. So Cube is a quantitative and systematic investment manager and we have a quantitative and systematic approach to investing. This means that You know, we don't come in the morning and say, you know, I feel I should buy Apple today. Uh, it's data-driven. All, uh, all of our investments are data-driven, and the algorithms make the, the decisions. Our investors are institutional investors, which include sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, universities. And we're located in Europe and Asia. We have offices in Paris, London, Hong Kong, Mumbai, Singapore. But we invest all around the, all around the world. Uh, and we invest in many asset classes, such as equities, crypt uh, cryptocurrencies, commodities, and electricity. And so the, the challenge for this year is to explain what drives the price of, of electricity. And you know, obviously, commodities have a big impact in, in the price of electricity, the price of natural gas, the price of coal, but also geopolitics, right? And we have seen that in the last uh, couple of years with the invasion of Ukraine, how the prices of electricity have been moving a lot based on what has happened uh, in geopolitics. And we have also seen that, for example, the weather has a big impact. So this is a, this is a map of last week where the red means that we have had a much higher temperature than it is normal for this time of the year. So of course that has an influence on, on the price of electricity, right? The, the price of electricity has dropped uh, quite a bit. And we can see that in, in these maps. So the, the map on the, on the right is from a month ago, and this one was from last week. And we can see that the prices of electricity have changed, you know, fivefold, tenfold. And uh, we can also see that the prices of electricity change depending on the, on the country. And they change depending on the country for different reasons. One of the reasons is that each country has a different production mix. So for example, France depends a lot on nuclear power and you know more and more on renewables. Uh, and on the other side, for example, Germany depends very strongly on, on fossil fuels. And again, it's also in, in increasing its production in, in renewables. So each country has its different uh, production mix and that affects the price that they can get for electricity. And since France and Germany and other countries can get different prices, sometimes you can exchange electricity between the countries, right? And there is a very active market in Europe where you can exchange the electricity. Uh, so the challenge for this year is to explain the variation of the futures contracts for 24-hour electricity. So what is a, and this is in France and in Germany. We're using France and Germany because these are the most liquid markets. Uh, first, a future contract is an agreement to buy or sell a commodity, an asset such as, as electricity. So, for example, if a nuclear plant wants to sell you know, electricity tomorrow, they can fix the price at which they, they sell it. Otherwise, usually this happens in an auction where people come and offer if they want to buy or they want to sell. You can buy for 24 hours, you can buy for the next week. And But we're focusing on, on one-day uh, one data. And, we're, and for, as an explanatory data, we're using the weather, commodities prices, and energy production. And I want to highlight that this is not a prediction challenge. We're not trying to predict what happens to electricity to, to, tomorrow using the data today. But we're trying to explain what happened today with the data that happened today, the temperature that, that we saw today, the production that we saw today. Uh, so the data, this is all real data. We're providing you with real data from France and Germany. We have anonymized the dates and the, and the data so that you cannot just go to and look at you know, what happened a month ago and predict exactly what was the price of the electricity. But otherwise, um, it's all real data. It's a small data problem, which is normal for economics or finance problems. 
Uh, it can also be challenging because it's very easy to overfit these models. Uh, and you're provided with commodity prices for natural gas, coal, carbon emissions. For the weather, you see temperature, rain, and wind measures. And you can also see the production, both in Germany and France, for nuclear plants, uh, natural gas, coal, solar, wind, uh, hydro, uh, hydro, and lignite, which is very important in, in Germany. And you can also see the use, uh, like the consumption per country, how much is exchanged between the countries. We have something that's called residual load, which is uh, after you take into account renewable energy, the, the electricity, which is much cheaper than other types of energy, how much demand or supply you, you're missing. Uh, as a metric, uh, as, as we saw before, we're using the Spearman's correlation. So this is a rank correlation. We're using this as a robust measure because, as you have seen, the price of electricity can change quite a bit through time. And so this is a robust measure, so we can measure you. Um, so we can measure the, the results of the model. And as a benchmark, we have a very simple model. It's a simple linear, linear regression. We clean the data just by uh, filling missing values by, with zeros. And we use the same linear regression by aggregating all the data for Germany and for France. But you know, you can do different things, right? You can have one model for France, one for Germany. Uh, more complicated models can, can help. Uh, so all of this is your choice. And you know, thank you. Uh, for more information, you can see uh, these, uh, these websites. Also, in the main website, you can also find a notebook uh, where you can see the, the benchmark and some hints on, on what to do next. So thank you. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions ou, ou est-ce qu'on peut passer à la suite Non, c'est bon. Ok. Bah, merci beaucoup, Eduardo.